Hello, my name is Sip Mendes. Welcome to Sip's Techie Tips. And this is my first video of, for 2019. 2018 was very good. I, had, I uh, got over 140 subscribers for my first year because I started right about at the beginning of that year. And I want to thank everybody who watches the videos, especially those that subscribe. And if you're not a subscriber, by all means, click on subscribe just below this video. If you want to be notified of new videos each time I publish, click on the bell. All right. Uh, Panda problems. I've gotten quite a few comments about problems with the Panda Mini, and I'll address that in the, the film. A lot of people are getting a, a message saying that it doesn't exist, and I'll explain that a little bit later on. Uh, what else? I've been having a particular problem with my Panda Mini, and uh, I think it's something I did. And uh, one of my pads isn't working properly, and I, I've figured out what, what's causing that. And I will also want to uh, work more with the drum pads, so we'll talk about uh, drum pads and how to, how to uh, assign sounds to them, change them around a little bit. Okay? So... Stay tuned. This is my World Panda Mini, and I really enjoyed this little uh, MIDI. It works pretty good. It's very compact. It has 25 keys, 8 pads, 4 knobs, and 4 sliders, and a bunch of buttons over here. All right. And uh, this is usually sitting over there. I hope that's in the right place. And the problem I've been having is this pad seems not to work. And actually, sometimes it lights up and sometimes it doesn't. But uh, if you look over here on my on the screen here in in um, um, Ableton Live version ten light, okay, and you'll notice that it is listening to all instruments and it's listening to all channels. My keyboard, the keys are set up as channel one. And the pads are set up as channel 10. But right now it's listening to anything and everything. And so if I hit a pad, you get an indication that something was hit. You hit a, a key, same thing. <clears throat> Let's get an instrument. If you don't remember about instruments, uh, I'm over here on drums. And these are all the drum kits. Click on them, you get a sample. And I'm going to start with 808. That's my favorite one. And um, once it's set up, you'll hear that the pads are working. Except for that guy. That guy is not working for some reason. And let's see if I can get these guys over here to work. Okay, so now my my keyboard is set back to where the default is. N notice the keys are blinking. It is blinking. Keys are being pressed. But uh, I'm not getting any sounds until I get down to D sharp. So there's a little bit of an overlap in them. You know. <clears throat> I think the problem has to do with the way my banks are set up. This pad is not set up properly. Because so, if I go to bank and uh, hit it, I get nothing. And that says I'm on bank one or scene one. If I go to bank two, it still doesn't work. The others work fine. If I go to bank three, now it starts working again. And bank four is fine also. So I think there's an assignment error that I can fix with uh, my World Panda Mini editor. So we'll go look at that. This is my World Panda Mini editor. And it's used to set up the, and customize the keyboard so that it'll perform more the way you want it to perform. And um, some users have been reporting getting a message. And this is the message they get. 
when they click on communication, read scene data, up comes a little message, poor grammar, it's <laughs> Panda Mini device is not exist, period. Okay, you can get this message if your keyboard is not plugged in. One, you can also get this message if you try to change characteristics of your keyboard while um, your workstation, your digital audio workstation is plugged in or is turned on or is in use. Yeah, you'll get it also. So you need to exit your program, your, your Ableton Live 10 Lite or your Cubase before you go to try to make changes. And that's why you might be getting this message. Also, you might be getting this message or a similar message if you have the wrong editor. Make sure you have the uh, editor that is intended for uh, World Panda Mini. If you go to the World website, <laughs> click on uh, MIDI and go to the second page and it should be on the second page. All right, now with my keyboard plugged in, I'll go to communication, uh, read scene data. It says, are you sure to read data from device? And say yes, and it has read it in. So let's go ahead and we'll click OK. Now I'm looking at the data that is in my keyboard. And if I go over here and I look at the uh, assignments for the pads. They are actually on the keys themselves. Um, if not, drop this list. And uh, if it says MIDI channel, change it to CC slash note number. That's the one you want. So it will display that it is assigned as a note and it'll tell you what note is assigned to each pad. And if you look at these, C3, A2, C sharp 3, that means it is the note C in the third octave from center, I believe. That's how they, 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 they uh, uh, define or designate the, the notes. And so this is in the third octave, this is in the second octave, third octave, third octave, second octave. This one is in the second octave, and so is the last one. But the one I'm having trouble with, pad 7, says D1. Okay, these are my scenes. I, on, on the uh, keyboard it says it relates to bank. It's, you use the bank key to, to um, change your scenes. So let's go to second one. Second one is identical. Scene two is identical. If I go to scene three though, and uh, these keys are identical except for pad seven. It says F sharp two. F sharp in the second oct octave. So it would be more or closer to the other ones. And the fourth one, is also the same. To change these, you need to just go to scene one. You click on the one you want to change. Then down here where it says CC slash note number, we will change that to F sharp two. Okay. And then click on any other key and you'll see that it has changed it has changed here now, F sharp 2. Then go to scene 2, same thing, click on the, the pad you want to change and change that to F sharp 2. Alright, and we'll double check scene 3, scene 4, and go back to scene two. Now what this is for, if you're really good with your drum sets, you can actually set up four different 
selections. Like I believe uh, this one is assigned to a conga drum. If you wanted a different drum, you can use that. If you wanted to get it with a cowbell on one of your scenes, you can replace the cowbell sound with something else. And then you need to go ahead and save this back to your, the keyboard. Click on communication, click on send data. Are you sure to send data? You say yes and send data OK. And then you click OK and then you can close this down and you're done. My drum sounds are fixed now. I'm going to go to bank one. It's working in bank one, a pad. Bank two, it's working in bank four and five. All right. Now, I'm going to go back to bank one. And um, right now, my digital audio workstation is listening to all s instruments from all channels. So these keys are not, ha do not have sounds assigned to them. All right. And what I want to do is change this sound. It's not loud enough. I don't like it. So I'd rather have something else, like maybe a loud cymbal. If I click over here on D sharp, I get a sound. Because this is the beginning of uh, my uh, drum sounds, <clears throat> my percussion sounds. And they seem to be in banks of 16. So if I go down an octave, D is now shifted over to here, D sharp. And there are 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 uh, <clears throat> drum sounds or percussion sounds. Now, I want to swap this guy out. I want to get rid of him. I want something else in its place. And the easiest way to do that is to go over here. And right now he's showing me this drum kit. And it's made up of different things. If I go down here to samples, and that happens to be the one uh, I've been using, I want to replace it with a symbol. So these are in alphabetical order. And I'll go back up and find symbols. Uh, I should learn to spell better. Okay, here's symbols. And uh, let me go up just a little bit. So I get the beginning of these guys. Okay, so here's the symbols. You see there's different ones. And they, have, they all sound slightly different. And the one I like is this one. Okay. So to reassign a sound or a sample to a, a key, all you got to do is click here, drag it across, and place it on top of the one you want to replace. Now, Wow, it's a little loud. Okay, there he is. Now, I can change characteristics of this. So let's see if I can get him a little less loud. Here's the wave of the cymbal sound. And he does have a volume control. <clears throat> That's loud. Okay. okay. I'm going to change banks real quick. And because I want, I want uh, to make sure I'm hitting them just the same. 
but it seems quite loud. So all I got to do is click on the volume control, drag them down. I'm going to drag them down just a little bit, to about a minus 20. Go back to 18. A minus. Let's see about minus. Well, 17, 1. And maybe that's better. Okay. And there's a little control down here in the corner that allows me to, to uh, listen to them. And that sounds pretty good. All right. Now, the only thing I have to do, since this is custom to this session, all i got to do is go to File. And I need to just save my set. And next time I come up here, it will be ready. Thank you for so much for watching this video. I uh, really enjoy doing these. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, well, you can give me a thumbs down. Um, I'll be sad for a while, but I'll get over it, okay? And um, what else? I hope you enjoy the new year. It may be good for you. I, I hope it's going to be good for me. It's starting not good already. All right, so until next time, take care.